good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Great to have you on board for today's webinar, How to Grow Sales Without Growing Headcount. Um, I'm pleased to have Craig Medlin from Focus joining us today um, as we explore this uh, exciting topic. It's one of those things that I think we're all, we can all reflect on, um, just that challenge of how we ensure that our sales teams are as efficient and as productive as possible and how we make sure that they've got the right tools to execute on the, the challenges that we give them. And moving on and over to you, Craig. So thank you, Stephen. Uh, and thank you everyone for uh, for taking the time out to to chat to us today. Uh, today's webinar is, uh, is just a, a quick 30 minute webinar. Uh, we're gonna, Steve and I are actually gonna discuss through some of the, the challenges that we see uh, our customers facing, and and how we can uh, we can actually help uh, solve those with uh, those problems with growing your sales without necessarily having to to grow your headcount. So today we will be sharing that with you and showcasing you know some of the things Focus can do uh, to help aid in those um, in those situations where you need better insight to to help grow your sales. So what are the facts? So, Stephen, I might even pose this one uh, to yourself. Uh, there are some stats out there that, you know, 68% uh, of businesses are actively redeploying or planning to deploy savings from sales headcount to invest in innovative sales tech. Is this something that, uh, that you're also seeing? Yeah, look, it's a good question, Craig. Um, we're certainly seeing businesses trying to do more with less. Um, I think everybody's sort of highlighting um, the process inefficiency that they have in their organizations. Um, the issues around handoffs between sales and operations and how can we leverage, you know, the CRM systems within our uh, MYB Advanced, MYB Exosystems, or how we can leverage uh, integrated CRM systems, perhaps Salesforce or HubSpot, um, to better manage the, that workflow and those processes. Uh, where we go from the front office elements of marketing and sales into the back office elements of sales ex of execution, um, operations and logistics. Um, we're certainly having a lot of conversations with clients uh, around that topic of how do I actually get more efficient in terms of my systems to really deliver that value to our uh, sales teams and, and help them focus on those sales activities, not on those frustrating admin um, you know, client yeah. complaint type issues. We've all had too many of those, but I think um, there's a huge amount of inefficiency in our sales channels. Uh, it's interesting that that next point that you've got there, Craig, 79% of sales teams currently use or are planning to use sales analytics technology to increase efficiency. Um, processes is one thing, but I suppose from your perspective, mm. uh, what conversations are you having with clients around the importance of the data um, and understanding the data that to support those sales conversations, it is something you know. Once again, it's it's an interesting stat that uh, you know teams are either uh, current or planning to. It's uh, especially with tougher economic times and you know challenges that businesses face, or what we've been facing with things like supply chain. Uh, knowing what your data wants to tell you, so seeing businesses start to better use the data they've got or not just relying you know businesses that are planning to to introduce analytics to um, into their um their ecosystem their systems ecosystem it is because they just can't rely on those those faithful customers to always place the same orders and they they're having to go out and, and hunt and make sure that they're the primary supplier uh, to their customers and they're keeping their customers happy and it's one of those things that you can't just keep throwing people at it's something that systems can do uh, more efficiently uh, throwing people at a problem where you don't have good process or good systems isn't always a very efficient way to uh, to grow sales is it yeah, just added to that I went to an event recently uh, we were talking about um, advertising investment and how uh, a particular organization was investing around their sales acquisition processes. Um, right. They highlighted that, at, you know, with the significant change in terms of the economic situation, 
uh, they're really pivoting their advertising spend and their sales activities to focus more on existing business rather than new business. Um, that they're actually yeah. seeing their their financial investment being more, uh, you know, getting a greater reward where they focus on those existing accounts. And I think, as you said, so, all of a sudden that becomes really important in terms of understanding who's buying what and who's not buying what and how do we actually analyse the data behind that. Yeah, well, it is. It's a it's a pretty well known fact that it's it's much cheaper to keep an existing customer happy as to opposed to acquiring a new customer. Uh, that you know, losing customer your your faithful customers to a competitor is not a great way to grow. Unfortunately, you, you, while it's important to get new customers, keeping your existing customers happy absolutely is really important for sure. That next point we got there, um, you know, this one actually surprised me uh, somewhat. That uh, you know, sales reps spend less than thirty six percent of their their time actively selling. You know that. That's a lot of time being spent doing not selling tasks, isn't it? Yeah, it's a crazy figure. Um, when we sort of initially discussed that, Craig, it's almost hard to believe. Mm. Um, and I, I think it's a reality of um, the, you know, the, often the inefficiency of our processes and the fact that our sales teams don't necessarily have those tools to really support them and enable them in the conversations that they need to have with prospects and with clients. Um, but thirty six percent scary. Um, I think for, <laughs> for, for most of us, it's a big question of actually, uh, you know, how do we get some increased efficiency, and how do we actually measure, manage, and monitor around salespeople activity, um, salespeople person efficiency, uh, and that they're actually really having valuable conversations with clients. Yeah, it's uh, that's a lot of admin time, isn't it? Really, or a lot of coffee breaks, one of the two, um, or both. <laughs> or both, or both. Um, and I guess, yeah, that last point is really that the, the market is, as a whole, is seeing that uh, things do need to change and there is a, a expected that agile teams, you know, that can adapt very quickly is sort of the way forward. So having very efficient, um, informed teams is, uh, is definitely a, a smart move. Well, we might launch a poll just to kind of see... Um, what your thoughts are. So what we've, we're have we interested in knowing is what is currently, in your opinion, uh, preventing you from increasing your sales? The classic time, time constraints, visibility of your data, sales resources. It's not always easy to get people these days uh, and customers. All right. Answers are in. So uh, a few people have uh, given us a decent variety of answers there Stephen so you know what's preventing sales is looks like the most majority is uh retention of customers and and growth of those customers and uh and sales resources seem to be the the most common uh problems that people are facing Does that say that visibility <laughs> and that visibility. Visibility there following up third um it's interesting in a sales resources it's it's definitely a challenge but um that issue of customers in terms of retention or growth or new, I think we're all reflecting on that. Um, you, you, we seem to all be having to work a little bit harder um, to get that business. I think everyone's sales cycles are extending. Um, retention and growth is a, a bigger focus and perhaps more of a challenge in terms of net new. Um, but yeah, look, there's certainly some opportunities there in terms of how we understand the data around that customer behavior um, and Absolutely. how we give that data visibility. And if you're if you're struggling in terms of getting good sales resources, um, how do we notch up that uh, significant admin time or reduce that significant admin time and really get those teams efficient? Absolutely, absolutely. So we're going to go through a little bit in in focus in just a moment, but just a couple of uh, you know like customers that uh, that are utilizing both uh, services from Kilimanjaro and Focus. You can see here. Uh, with a couple of uh, customer proof points there. We also have a, a case study here, and this very much supports what we're, we're talking about here for, for sales leaders to go ahead and reach targets. They need to hand, uh, get a handle on the data to develop a data-driven strategy. So like we said at the beginning, relying on just what has always worked in the past with the way businesses are evolving it's not always going to be a, a surefire way to to see success 
Uh, and it did find that those that use data, so using what you've a great resource that you've already got in your business, uh, they're seeing increasing profits by as much as eight percent, but also more importantly, reducing the cost of the uh, of their operations. So, you know, seeing a growth in profit and a reduction in cost is uh, sort of the the goal we're all working for, I guess, isn't it? It's there's no uh, no better better result to get than uh, using the data. So, using truth. Uh, in the information you got to drive um, not just profit but reduction in uh, in cost. Oh, just because uh, we like asking you questions. If we can run the the second poll question, um, this one is a little bit more around. This is just a single choice. Uh, who does the sales analytics within your business? So I guess what we're we're wanting to know is who's a who's making these data-driven decisions who who can have visibility of uh of the data is it everyone in your business is it just the uh head or, or the c-suite or is it finance sales managers uh yes yeah, so if everyone could uh, pop in an answer there that would be great this one's a little bit a little bit more even i i'd say but still the c-suite uh, are those that are doing the sales analytics uh, surprisingly, sales managers aren't very high on that one compared to finance, Stephen. Yeah, it's interesting. The finance team always gets stuck with the reporting, don't they? Yeah, um, it's, it is somewhat interesting, that one. Let's uh, not just live in PowerPoint. Let's actually uh, show you, I guess, an example of uh, what you could do using analytics to, you know, helping either the, the sales managers actually get more visibility. You know, sometimes sales managers are sort of concentrating on selling and uh, not so much on 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 driving so let's uh let's actually sh show how whether it's the c-suite sales people at a low at the at the cold face level or it's uh or management uh in your business how can you actually use the data that you're capturing in your myob uh system how can you better use that? How how can that help you drive your business and grow without needing to throw people at uh, at that situation? So this isn't going to be a full in depth demo. Uh, it is a short webinar today, but it is uh, hopefully enough to give you an idea of how you can better utilize some of that data that you've you've probably already got in your system. So I've got a dashboard here for those that haven't seen Focus. We are a cloud based uh platform so if you want to use this on for your sales team out on the road so they know who their customers are and who they should talk to and what they should talk to them about so they can make informed decisions this can be used on mobile devices this can also be used by a sales manager and your c-suite and finance and it's basically becomes that single version of truth across your business so you don't one way to find efficiency in your business is to not have five different reporting methods done by five different teams that yield five different results for what should be the same thing. So you can definitely find efficiency, not just in the sales team, but potentially in the finance or uh, it's usually the finance team that gets uh, lumped with reporting. On this dashboard here, I've got uh, some of the classic things you might want to look at. Well, are we trending in the right direction? Are we seeing growth in the number of customers that we're looking at? So I'm actually looking here at which of our reps are, are growing their customers. Uh, also some KPIs around our customers. How many customers in your organization, for example, may not, you might have customers that have stopped buying something from you in the last two months. I don't think I'd be particularly happy to see 912 customers suddenly stop trading with me. So we might want to investigate that or underperforming customers, some good news, customers that are growing. But uh, Steve and I were, were talking also to not just your, uh, your sales data, but maybe some CRM data might be a, an indicator of some inefficiencies you might be having in your team. So for example, I've got here who my top reps are, but also, who is uh, 
who's our top performers in terms of revenue, how much activity do they need to actually perform to generate that revenue and how much value per activity are they generating? So we can start to see how hard a certain rep is working versus um, versus somebody who's maybe generating similar revenue but doesn't have to work as hard to uh, to achieve it. So these dashboards are a no-code system. You don't need to employ a developer or anything to build these. It's all very fast and easy to, uh, to do yourself. Now, these dashboards, it's great to have a view of the world that uh, gives you an overview of your business. But if you, as a manager, for example, wanted to see who are your underperforming customers? That's sort of a concerning amount of underperformers. Who are they? So you can actually click through these uh, dashboards. There's a lot of governance built into focus. So if someone's not allowed to drill through or when they drill through, that number may show who their customers are. And when they drill through, a salesperson may, this list may be just tailored to see the customers that belong to them. But for example, I'm straight away drawn to a customer that's lost nearly a third of their revenue compared to the same time uh, to a comparative period. So in the last three months, this customer has lost a third of its value. I want to drill in. I want to understand what's driving this business. So instead of having to run another report or ask finance to run another report and or having to throw people at having a reporting team in a business, we can simply select this and drill through, see where the problems are. In my case, my problems in my lights and lamps uh, product category. And then I can just keep drilling through and understand, well, these are some real problems that I'm, uh, that I'm experiencing here. I'd like to know more about that. I've found just with this one customer, $61,000 drop off in a three month period. Are we talking to this customer about this? So if we were in a sales management or in a C-suite type role, we may not go this low, but the tool does allow us to go down to see which customer is concerning us. And then we can also change our mind and go, is it just this customer that underperforms in these groups or is there more to the story? So we can actually remove parts of the our selection and just by sorting the data, I can see in the last three months, these customers stopped buying from me altogether. Like we mentioned earlier, it's much cheaper to retain an existing customer. So we haven't done a great job of retaining these guys. So are we going to reach out to these customers and speak to them? Uh, do we need to log a, an activity in our CRM system so we can identify something quickly uh, in our business and understand who needs to go and talk to, uh, to these clients? And if we are sort of changing our hats and we're the person that talks to clients, we might say, well, this customer, should, uh, should be, we should go and visit them. We should understand We've identified that this is a customer that we want to retain, that we've seen some underperformance in. So I want to be informed. I don't want to tie up somebody else's time for a sales rep just to get the information to be able to make a phone call. They can use a, a scorecard to understand, well, this particular customer is actually does pretty big invoices and they don't return a lot of products. So I'm pretty happy with that. But they're, uh, they're starting to trend down a little bit so that we're not seeing the, the growth that we want to see. So we might want to adjust uh, our planning with them or how often we talk to them. We can see what their product mix are, their buying patterns, and how that might differ to everyone else. So do they not buy the products we want when we want? Are we seeing them uh, moving away from certain product lines? We can basically follow a train of thought very quickly in data to identify, is this customer worth our time? Is it worth putting effort into this customer? Without, We can answer that question very quickly without having to tie up our own time, hours building reports and running Excel dumps and things like that, or involving other teams. We can be much more self-sufficient in, uh, in our reporting and analytics to really understand what's going on and hopefully improving on that stat of 
you know, spending only 36% of the time talking with customers. If your sales team could simply click on a on a customer and see everything that's going on, what products they like, what products they don't like, they're going to hopefully be able to improve on that stat and spend more time talking to their uh, to your customers. I think that's a great point, Craig. I think um, you know, looking at who's doing this reporting when, within the attendees' organisations. Mm. Um, the fact that our sales managers aren't actually doing that reporting, it's probably just because it's an issue of being too complex or the data not being available or not having yeah. the right tools. Um, the fact that Focus provides this self-service type approach um, that you know a salesperson or a sales manager can use in that trusted environment that ensures governance, that ensures a sales rep can only see the data that's appropriate to them or appropriate to their team, however you need to manage that, um, yeah. just ensures that we're actually using the tools analyzing the data and seeing the trends. Absolutely, absolutely. So really the takeaways are if you can optimize your process and using tools like uh, Focus or you know, even if you've got uh, other optimization outside of reporting, tools can really help um, streamline a lot of the, those processes before you actually employ uh, extra people uh, we made this point earlier, it's, it's easier to sell to an existing customer uh, as opposed to acquiring a new one. Tools are great. They they sort of take the, the reliance from people. Uh, I'm sure, Stephen, you've seen this as often as I has, have where a business has a real Excel whiz in the business that sort of handles the reporting. Uh, and then that person leaves and the business is sort of left with this um, this gaping hole of they don't know what's going on because it was it was tied to a person and not to a not to a process or not to not to a system. And I guess this last point uh, also quite important tools are, are generally cheaper than people to uh, to employ, to get set up, to get up and running. You can usually get a tool up and running a lot quicker before you um, you have to throw people at it. What do you reckon, Stephen? Run more poll just for the what we've got here is uh, do you need to invest in some sales analytics technology as a way to increase the productivity and efficiency of your team? It's a good question, that one, Craig. And, and perhaps it's also not just about investing in the technology, but ensuring that we're training the right people to actually be able to use these tools and use these systems. Um, some really interesting numbers there, um, Craig. Um, yep. Over... You know, nearly 50% of, of our attendees today saying that they need to, to relook at investing in sales analytics um, yep. and how they increase their team's productivity and efficiency. Now, of course, uh, we are putting out that last call for questions. Um, so let me just uh, prompt that to the audience and back over to you, Craig. Great to see some, uh, some questions. I think some have actually um, come through. So we'll, we'll start running through these and please feel free to uh, to keep answering them in. Um, so a good question here from Karen, uh, who's asked, can you stop users seeing data that is not relevant to them? Yes, you can. Yeah, there is a very, very strong data governance model in focus. So you can actually write down to the data itself, you can control what someone can see, but also what they can do. So uh, absolutely, yes. Okay. Another question here, can you run various scenarios on focus and compare those scenarios? Can you save those scenarios? Yes, uh, we didn't have time today in this, uh, in this particular demo uh, today of focus, but there is actually a budgeting and planning uh, function in our, um, in our suite of products that does allow you to do scenario planning of not just financial information, but things like sales information. So if you want to run a scenario, if these customers grew or we lost these customers, what would this actually do? You can uh, absolutely do that using our, our planning tools. Yeah, it's a great point, Craig. Um, maybe if you could just also talk to the broader uh, focus suite of products. I know we've kind of been looking at uh, Sort of this, the analytics piece today, but do you want to just give a little bit of an overview of uh, you know, yeah, absolutely rebates those elements? Yeah, so today we have concentrated more on the analytics part of focus, and analytics doesn't have to just be sales analytics, it's really analytics of 
any part of your business. So inventory, bill of materials, production, uh, purchasing, uh, CRM, you, we can analyze pretty much any part of your business. Uh, there is also a financial side to our offering. So we offer uh, consolidated financial reporting and uh, analytics. So being able to actually produce uh, multiple structured P&Ls, balance sheets, cash flows, being able to do the consolidation of MYOB, but also if you've got businesses within your uh, within your or ERP systems within your business outside of the MYOB suite, those can still be uh, introduced into uh, Focus to give you true consolidation. And we do have a very, very uh, powerful budgeting and forecasting tool that allows you to build these scenarios and models, involve the whole team. There's a whole bunch of auditing, very easy to use tool that gives you some really, really powerful planning. Uh, and lastly, we also have a rebates uh, analysis product or rebate generation product where you can actually uh, build all your rebates in focus, uh, actually have them calculated. It can spit out the results. It can also give you near miss analysis. So you can see how close to your next rebate you might be or how close your payables are to your, to your clients. That's great, Craig. Thank you for that summary. Um, a good question here from Michael. Doesn't MIB Advanced have its own dashboard capabilities? Um, and it's a great point. Uh, Advanced does have some strong features um, around dashboarding in a similar way to EXO having features around analytics. Uh, one of the differences that we really see at Kilimanjaro is just that variability in firstly, in terms of the self-service aspect of focus. But secondly, the fact that we're actually using business intelligence as a tool to get the level of detail of data, but then slice and dice in the way that Craig showed us to ask questions of that data. Uh, when you're looking at our MIB advanced dashboards, we need to create a generic inquiry behind that. Uh, we need to present that generic inquiry on a dashboard. Uh, it's a little bit one dimensional in terms of the ability to, to drive into that through that slice it and dice it. Um, the other thing is that element of the governance that we talk to. How can we have one set of dashboards that work, uh, you know, almost one set of reports that work across an entire organization, but show the right data to the right people uh, without having to create multiple versions of those reports. So there's a few differences there. Anything else to add, Craig, from your perspective? I, I think that's a nice summary. And it is sometimes things like you're using Salesforce or HubSpot and you need to have some of that data running very different with different governance uh, and a different level of detail and show it all in the same dashboards. Uh, what's also important to note is focus dashboards can be shared with non-MYB users. So if you need to share something with a customer, for example, there's a high level of governance that allows you to uh, give access to a particular customer to, to their data. That's great, Craig. Uh, moving on to the next question here. Um, can focus share dashboard examples to give us a head start on creating these? Yeah, so there is actually an out of the box for all MYB products. Uh, so we do actually give you a, uh, a head start, I guess you could say, but part of an implementation of focus, most importantly is, is training. And part of that training is the understanding how to create these yourself. Uh, so you're not uh, stuck with the uh, just out, out of the box ones. We do train you how to use it, how to build them. Uh, and you also get account management so and support. So if you forgot how to do something or you want to run an idea past someone, uh, we offer that level of support. Well, that ties into the next question uh, that we have here, Craig. Are the graphs, et cetera, all a standard template? And will information come through easily from MYOB? You've sort of talked to the first point. Um, yeah. You know, we have a standard set of solutions that include a bunch of standard dashboards and reporting, et cetera. Um, but in terms of those solutions, there's also some standard integrations into MYBX and MYB Advanced. Do you want to maybe talk to that, yeah. Craig? Yeah, the, we do. The short answer is yes, we do have uh, some standard solutions. Uh, these have really been built and uh, shaped to pull what's really relevant data 
to into focus. So if you've ever looked at you know an ERP systems, the amount of data that it's storing, there is a lot of data in there. Some of it's actually not relevant for reporting reasons. And that sometimes adds to that complexity that makes people not want to, to dive into looking at the data because it, it's a bit scary, it's a bit intimidating. So we have out of the box solutions that have absolutely all the relevant data that is very easily pulled from the MYB suites into focus. Uh, but in saying that, if you've had customizations made, you've got things that are more unique to your business that may not exist in another uh, MYB client, that it does not mean that you can't bring that data in. During the implementation process, it's very easy to add additional data to, uh, to a focus solution. I think the other element there, Craig, is just the importance of ensuring, you know, the, the value here isn't just around analysing our MYBX or MYB advanced data. It's about having that whole of business approach in terms of all of our line of business applications, bringing that data in, making sure the right people can access that, and making sure that we're driving that analytics around the KPIs for the business, the different departments that we have, the different business units that we have, yeah. and ensure that it's referenced in the way that your organisation needs to see it. Yeah, visibility is really key. And sometimes those other sources can be something as simple as a spreadsheet, but people don't have to go to a spreadsheet in a particular folder and know how to operate it to get their answer. It can be actually all in a, in a read-only solution where they can't do anything wrong. Another good question here from Michael. How long does it take to set this up? And more specifically, I think, how much effort is required on our part? Yeah, look, the setup is because we have these out of the box, we work very closely with, uh, so an implementation of Focus is actually uh, jointly performed with both Kilimanjaro and Focus. Kilimanjaro has some great uh, internal resources and understanding of, um, of Focus, but more importantly, they understand your environment. So getting uh, something set up can be something that's usually uh, a matter of weeks. So we normally say, you know, four to six weeks uh, for an initial solution to get up and running is about the right amount of time to go from signing to, um, to you being trained on how to use it and all the validation and everything taking place. The other part to that is while that it might take, you know, four to six weeks to, to set focus up, your involvement in that as the client is generally measured in uh, in hours as opposed to days. So we do the heavy lifting. Your involvement is really at that validation stage. We build it. Does it, uh, does it match what you expect? And is there a business rule we need to understand? Uh, assuming that is correct, your next level of involvement is really to be available for training. So it's a pretty um, pretty straightforward process and not a lot of time to get uh, to get up and running. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, no, that's great, Craig. I think a lot of it really is about that enablement piece, how to make sure the right people are being trained and that we enable them to actually use Focus as a self-service tool um, mm -hmm. to ask questions of their data and start that journey of how do we understand uh, what our customers are doing and what they're not doing and, and how do we uh, leverage that data to actually expand on our sales opportunities. All right, well, look, that, I think that's it in terms of questions, Craig. Great. Well, um, I know we've gone over time a little bit, but uh, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody for, for taking the time to um, come and speak to us or listen to us rather. Um, yeah, if you'd like to get in touch, uh, Stephen, it looks like it's best to get in touch with, uh, with your team to organise next steps. Yeah, absolutely. Please do just feel free to outreach to your account manager. Um, they can assist you in terms of any questions you have and really making sure that we explain focus and give you a demonstration around focus and how it can help you address your business needs. Um, don't hesitate to reach out. We will provide this recording to you as well by way of email. Thanks again, Craig, for all your assistance. Great to have a chat with you today. Um, great Likewise. to explore this topic further. Thank you. And thank you again to everybody.